Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror film, Book of Blood. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. In a quiet library, while the bookseller is arranging the books, there is a loud bang at the door. He wants to check what has happened, but sees a person from the mirror. He runs away inward immediately with fear. But soon, the man catches him up, and threatens him with a knife, claiming that he is coming for the money, which the bookseller has owed. The seller attempts to save his own life, so he tells the debt collector about a treasure called Book of Blood, a rare tome worth a million dollars in an abandoned town. The debt collector still kills the bookseller. Then he sets off to the abandoned town together with his driver, attempting to find the valuable book. Comes to another scene. There is a girl named Jenna living in a seaside villa, who has been suffering from mental illness since she was a child. She doesn't get on well with her mother because of the illness. And it is getting worse since her boyfriend died. Sometimes a normal sound can be excessively noisy to her. The pain makes her become more and more peevish. So Jenna's parents plan to send her back to the mental hospital again. After knowing about their decision, Jenna slips away from home at night with a lot of cash. She comes to the station and buys a ticket. But as she turns around, she discovers that a strange man is staring at her. Jenna is a little scared, but still ignores the strange man and gets on the bus. When the bus is parking at the rest area, she realizes that the strange man is also on the bus. And it is clear that he is targeting her. Jenna gets off the bus as soon as possible. And it seems that she has threw off that stalker successfully. Walking at night, she books a homestay online, which is run by an old couple. It is a well-arranged house. The hotel couple are very friendly to her. When Jenna is standing in front of the fireplace to keep warm, a boy who is also a guest, comes for her to say hello. He tells her that he has seen her before in an internet cafe, and Jenna just says something as a response out of politeness. After exchanging a few words, she returns to her room, and has a rest. While Jenna is lying on the bed, she suddenly hears something strange through the wall. But Jenna takes it as a hallucination at first, so she decides to go get some fresh air outside. However, she hears the sounds again. This time Jenna listens to the sounds carefully, and then she sees that there is a cockroach crawling on the broken wallpaper. Jenna is scared and dodges backward, but unexpectedly bumps into the hostess. The hostess says that she just comes to invite her to have some tea. Jenna agrees with her suggestion. Before she leaves the room, she glances at the wall again, finding nothing but the intact and flawless wallpaper on the wall. It seems that everything she has seen is just her illusion. However, when they are chatting in the living room, another cockroach comes out from the crack of the floor. Jenna doubts that it is her illusion again. But the boy sees it and tends to kill the cockroach. The hostess stops him, and catches the cockroach with a napkin, then throws it out from the window. The host explains that his wife doesn't want to kill any living thing, and the insecticide is not allowed to use here. Later the old couple go to bed. Before Jenna go back to her room, she chats with the boy for a while. The boy suggests that maybe they can go to the university nearby tomorrow, and have a cup of tea together. Jenna nods and exchanges phone numbers with him. Then they return to their room respectively to have a rest. Jenna falls into sleep with the headphones on. She has a nightmare this time as usual. What's worse, she even feels that she gets sleep paralysis. No matter how hard she tries, she can't even move a finger. And there are loud noises coming from all sides of the wall constantly. In a daze, Jenna hears something running to the door. And then a woman with long hair appears in front of her. Jenna falls into great fear, but the woman just leaves the room without doing anything. After the woman leaves, the boy comes into her room half naked. He approaches Jenna and leans over her. But the next second, he's dragged away by some unknown force. Later comes the hostess. She takes off Jenna's headphones kindly first, and then applies something to her temples, while the host measures Jenna's body with a ruler. And the couple leave after doing these things. Struggling and half asleep, Jenna feels thousands of cockroaches flowing out of her mouth. The next morning Jenna wakes up as usual. It seems that everything that happened last night was just a dream. And now the old couple is doing some farm works in the yard. Everything is going in a normal way, but Jenna doesn't see the boy this day. She sits in the cafe alone by herself, but somehow she feels something strange when she is paying for the bill. She looks around and finds that the man who was following her on the bus is now standing outside the shop and looking for her. Jenna is so scared, and she rushes out of the cafe through the staff entrance, and runs back to the homestay. She even thinks that the man is also one of her illusions. Seeing Jenna trembling at the door, the hostess comes and shows her concern to Jenna. But Jenna doesn't want to reply her. In order to comfort Jenna, the hostess tells Jenna a story about herself. When she was young, she gave birth to boy and girl twins. Although the brother was stillborn, the girl survived. And now she has had two sons. 
they live together happily with the host and the hostess. Jenna is comforted by the story, and she becomes willing to talk about her experience. She says that she used to be treated in a psychiatric hospital, but she didn't take the drug which she should have taken after she left the hospital. As a result, she even has a persecution complex now. Jenna warms up and complains about herself, saying that she should stay in the hospital instead of running out. Hearing her words, hostess claims that it is very safe here. Jenna, however, wants to leave here anyway. But the next second, she receives messages from the boy explaining his missing. While hesitating whether to leave or not, Jenna sees the host working in the yard. The very ordinary moment warms her heart, and she finds herself enjoying the atmosphere a lot. So she decides to stay here a few more days. But at night, Jenna hears the strange sounds coming from the wall again. She crouches down to check the wall and discovers that there is a crack in the wallpaper, which leaks faint breathing. Jenna gropes on the wall and tries to find out if the wall is movable. To her surprise, there is a secret dark space behind the wallpaper. She lights the space up with her phone. She sees a horrible scene of a shrunken woman hidden inside. Jenna screams out loud, which makes the hostess come over and knock at the door. She asks Jenna what happened in her room. Jenna is almost frozen with panic, explaining to the hostess that she has just had a nightmare. At the same time, she receives a message from the boy. Jenna tells him to call the police. But what she doesn't expect is that behind the scene is the hostess who is chatting with her. While Jenna is distracted by their communication, the shrunken woman reaches out her hand to touch Jenna. Jenna utters a shriek and jumps with fright. The hostess discovers that the door is unlocked. But as soon as she comes in, she is knocked out by Jenna. Noticing the huge, loud noise, the host comes for her, and Jenna storms out of the room, trying to escape from here, but soon she finds out that all the windows and doors here are sealed. Finally, Jenna discovers a narrow exit, but as soon as she enters, she is obstructed by countless hands from both sides of the wall. Jenna gets out of there immediately. What's worse, the couple find her and make her faint by injecting some kind of anesthetic. When Jenna wakes up, she finds herself confined to a chair. She can see and hear everything but can't move at all. The hostess sits beside her and tells the truth about this house. She says that she used to be a nurse, and every time when she saw her terminal patient, she would help them leave this painful world. But later, what she has done was discovered by the hospital. She was asked to take early retirement. The hospital wanted to hide the truth as much as possible. And soon after, her husband also lost his job. Their daughter and her family always wanted to move out from there. In order to keep them staying, the host and hostess made them paralyzed and kept them inside the wall and under the floor in a way that they thought it could provide a better life for them. It turns out it was not a dream occurring to Jenna the first night she slept. They actually measured the figure of Jenna and created a suitable place for her in the wall. The boy who should have a date with her is now lying under the floor. Now it is her turn to be paralyzed and placed inside the wall. While the hostess is going to seal her eyes, there is a ring at the door. It is the strange man who followed Jenna before, saying that he is there for Jenna. The hostess has no excuse to send him off, so the man is invited into the house. And then the man explains why he wants to find Jenna. His son who committed suicide used to have a relationship with Jenna. And it seemed they happened to have a conversation before his son jumped off the roof. So he wants to know what they had said that day exactly. While he is talking about his son, the host approaches him secretly and hits him with a thump on the head. Then the hotel couple try to deal with the body as soon as possible. On the other side, Jenna regains the ability to move. She manages her way to get out of the house. But at the same time, the hostess drives the man's car to the door. So Jenna hides into a hut, where stores lots of paralyzed bodies, waiting to be settled. Then the hostess leaves the car and goes back to the house again. Jenna seizes the opportunity and rushes into the car. However, the hostess and the host come back immediately, with the body carried into the car together. Jenna hides in the backseat holding her breath. Fortunately, the couple do not notice her in the car, and they decide to throw the body away first. They drive two cars respectively to a stope without a break. Jenna has no chance to escape from the car at all, and when they arrive, the host gets off the car and starts it from outside. The car rushes down the cliff with Jenna inside. Comes to another scene. Mary is a teacher, and she receives a videotape in the morning. In the recording, there is a naked man struggling in a messy and bloody room. Mary thinks that this is some kind of prank, and she cannot watch it anymore and turns off the video. But the next day, when she comes to her office, a young man is waiting for her. The young man claims that he can communicate with dead people. 
but Mary who is an atheist, only wants to call the security guards and evict him. But the young man just keeps talking about her son, who succumbed to leukemia, and passed away not long ago. What he said softens Mary's heart, so Mary says that she can give him a chance to show his ability. While the young man is preparing himself in a room with three white walls, Mary and her students are standing outside and observing his experiment. She means to expose the scam. But to her surprise, when she turns off the light at his request, there is a scream breaking through the room. And when she turns on the light again, they're horrified to find the walls full of bloody words. And the young man is convulsing on the ground, naked. Mary checks the man and then finds a sentence on the wall, which was said to her by her son when he was still alive. He asked Mary what would happen to him if he died. Mary just said that he would not die but only fell asleep. Looking at the sentence on the wall, now Mary thinks that this young man can really communicate with dead people. She invites the young man into her house, and asks him to bring her son's soul back to her. It is the first time the young man comes to her home, but he just directly walks into her son's room. It seems that the young man knows everything about her son. From that moment on, Mary believes in him firmly. The young man who appears in her life, brings her hope and happiness. So naturally, they become closer and closer. But their relationship doesn't last too long. The young man cheats on her, and has sex with her student one night. And the drunk man confesses everything to her. He says that he was hired by Mary's husband, who he met at an abstinence party. Her husband asked him to help Mary live through the pain of losing their son. So he faked the entire experiment. The words appearing on the walls were written by him in advance, and will appear when applied to some kind of chemical spray, much powerful than hormone spray. Mary is astonished by the truth, and she cannot accept this at all. She stumbles back to her son's room helplessly. But the next second, she glimpses a few words showing on the blackboard, bring him to us. And then she hears a boy breathing on the bed. Mary approaches the bed, and smiles as she uncovers the quilt. The next day, the young man intends to leave, and he comes to Mary to say goodbye. But Mary is something strange in her attitude. She says that he cannot leave right off, because many scholars will visit her home tonight. They are coming there for his performance, so he needs to show his ability as usual in front of the audience. The young man is tempted by the fast cash, so he agrees to stay. But he doesn't see a little boy playing on the swings, right when they are talking. At night Mary brings the young man into her son's room for the show, and everything seems quite normal. But when he is about to start, Mary suddenly put her lips to his ear, saying that he has really annoyed them. Then she goes out of the room and closes the door, telling the scholars that no matter what happens, the door must be closed. The young man cannot understand what Mary just said. Suddenly the chair nearby begins to sway without anyone touching it. And this time he finally sees the little boy. It is exactly Mary's son sitting on it, and he says that they are not sleeping. While the young man is engulfed in fear, countless souls emerge into the room. They grasp the young man, and engrave bloody words onto his body. At the same time, the whole town falls into darkness in an instant. The young man is almost dead when Mary opens the door again. Then, the scene shifts back to the debt collector. Now he and his driver are on the way to a town where Mary's home locates. They almost hit Jenna when Jenna got off the bus to avoid the strange man. When they arrive at the town, a woman runs in front of the car without any warning. The driver has an emergency brake, which makes the engine die immediately. Both of them are confused by this dreadful atmosphere, and it seems they are lost in there. But not long, an old lady comes from the dark, calling the name of the driver and guiding him somewhere. The debt collector finds a flashlight, and follows the driver into a church. While he is checking around with a flashlight, the driver who is kneeling on the ground, explains to him that he sees his dead mother, and she is inviting him to accompany her. Then he shoots himself without hesitation. Although the debt collector is bewildered by the death of the driver, he leaves the church and still wants to find the Book of Blood. Groping in the dark around the town, he steps into Mary's house, accidentally. The dust has settled on everything. It seems that no one has lived here for a long time. But the next minute, a laughter comes from upstairs. The debt collector approaches the room with a gun. The now old aged Mary is standing by the window. She notices him, and the debt collector asks her about the book. Mary just smiles and steps to the man, who has been covered by bloody words on his body, telling him that this man is exactly the book of blood, and she is the only reader of this book. Then her son shows up from her back. The debt collector insists on taking the man away with him. But he doesn't realize that his name has been already engraved on the body of the man. Right then a group of mice charge at the debt collector and crawl up his body. He intends to get rid of the mice, but push the knife into himself by mistake. 
He drags the wounded body, runs away from the house, and happens to witness the hotel couple dealing with a body. Inevitably he becomes one of the victims of the couple. On the other hand Jenna wakes up in hospital. She was saved by someone after she dropped off the cliff, and her mother is communicating with the police about her accident. Before long, Jenna leaves the hospital and comes back home. However, she never mentions the hotel couple to anyone, and her mental state remains in a poor situation as before. One day she recalls the night when her boyfriend committed suicide. He was standing on the roof and talking with her over the phone. Jenna didn't care about his emotion at all, and just kept talking about something very philosophical. She told him that he could just imagine she was right there around him, and they were going to jump off the building together. But she didn't expect that her boyfriend really fell to the ground. Jenna breaks down in tears, and she knows that she cannot forgive herself forever. So she comes back to find the hotel couple again. After some preparation, Jenna is settled under the floor, with her eyes and ears sewed up. She will lie here for the rest of her life. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.